security consultants, one of my friends actually uh, has has done this uh, in his as a part of his job. He has uh, authentic. He has uh, passed the, um, the security by just telling that uh, he had an appointment with a very important person, and when he got to the floor, uh, he was able to get into the uh, the server room uh, because he told that. Uh, he was he was actually uh, going to maintain the system uh, to just increase the performance and of course the employees were already complaining about the performance and they just let him in uh, along with the passwords <laughs> another method is um, phishing or uh, spoofing in this case um, uh, the ad adversary convinces the uh, the users uh, about a, a false identity um, uh, this time online, uh, you, you know, we, we always uh, get emails or we see websites that look like, uh, you know, some some bank or, or which, uh, but they are actually not, uh, you know, legitimate sites. Uh, so what what uh, in this kind of attack, what happens is uh, the adversary asks you to uh, enter your passwords and login name, and they just store these uh, to be used later, and to increase the um, <coughs> The, um, <clears throat> the convincing uh, to to make to make it more convincing, they usually just forward you to the uh, to the legitimate site, so you don't know that you have uh, you know you have given your password. Um, an alternative method is uh, uh, snooping and and, and shoulder <coughs> surfing. In this case, um, the adversary just observes you uh, while you're while you're typing your password. Uh, this, if uh, if the adversary um, uh, physically observes you, it's called uh, shoulder surfing, and it could happen in the labs here, or it could happen in the airport, or it could happen in a in a in a plane when you're uh, sitting uh, next to another passenger, or uh, somebody could install uh, video cameras and get your passwords. An interesting one is. Um, actually uh, uh, capturing the passwords by using microphones. This works with the ATMs. Uh, in the past, ATMs used to uh, give a different beep for every key. And if you were able to uh, record this uh, uh, sequence of beeps, you, you were able to uh, retrieve the, the, the PIN number of a, uh, of a, per, of a customer. Another surprising a uh, surprisingly frequent attack is is guessing. Um, this is usually done by the closed circle of a of a user. If I know the, the if I know your birthday or your your uh, close relatives' names or your pet's name, I can actually uh, type it and see whether it's actually your password. And this uh, works a lot of the time. This works. And um, another another method is uh, if I know. Uh, Let's say I know that I know your Hotmail password, and I want and uh, there is a, a high chance that you're using your Hotmail password for your Yahoo account too. So I can use the, the that knowledge to uh, to access your Yahoo account, which would also uh, work as guessing. If if nothing else works, you could also do brute force attack, or an adversary could do a brute force attack. In this case. Uh, what they do is they just, um, you know, start a computer program that just uh, repeatedly tries different different uh, passwords that could be, uh, you know, that, that you could have used. Um, well, most of the time, uh, these these attacks should not work in, in in theory because the password space is so huge. But the the problem is that uh, we as humans uh, do not, you know, use random passwords. And uh, if the uh, the brute force attack uh, program is clever, they can actually break the password much less in a much less time than it is expected theoretically. A similar attack is a dictionary attack. In this case, um, actually, um, first the adversary steals the password file, and then, um, well, as we know that the, the, in the password file the the passwords are encrypted, but um, the adversary in this case uses a dictionary of co uh, encrypted common passwords and compare these passwords with the password file that uh, he or she has stolen and uh, most of the time they can break um, 
a lot of passwords in this in this by using this method. <coughs> so what are what are the com uh, countermeasures. So, uh, well, um, we all know from now that uh, we, we, uh, we have been uh, computer users for a long time. Uh, it's now our common sense that we shouldn't trust emails, uh, we shouldn't download software from untrusted uh, sources, we shouldn't uh, click on suspicious links, and um, if possible, we should use a dedicated secure computer to access um, uh, important important information such as our bank or um, school account or work account. And, al and also uh, we should check the security signs, we should, we should see whether there's a lock icon on the, on the bottom right corner or there's a message on the top of the uh, browser screen that says, uh, you know, the, there, there might be a problem. And, um, well, if and of course, this, this works for us because we have been using the computers for a long time. Uh, and for the users that are not uh, familiar with this kind of uh, information, um, we know that education should work, uh, should work, and they should, you know, uh, they as soon as they learn about these things, um, the attacks that abuse this kind of uh, vulnerabilities uh, will work will work less. Another way that we could we could increase the security is, as we said, uh, policies. Um, there are policies that that force people um, not to give password their passwords over the phone or to their uh, peers. Or um, there are also policies that force you um, to not write your passwords. Um, and and also, um, you know, you could have also implement systems that make sure that users use different passwords on each of the, in each of your uh, computer accounts, and uh, you could also implement. A, uh, I guess Purdue is implementing this one, uh, a policy that that enforces the users to change their passwords very frequently, and uh, you could also enforce uh, good password gu guidelines such that all the passwords have to have um, uppercase, lowercase characters, symbols, and numbers. But unfortunately, the problem is. Um, the users do not obey these, and they find workarounds. They they change that back their passwords as soon as they change it to a new one. They they do increments of their passwords that so they you know the first password is password one, the second you know after they change they make it password two and so on. They still go on writing writing down their passwords even though they know that uh, you know this is against the policies. Uh, they share their passwords uh, within the company because uh, you know because of peer pressure. Uh, because of the fear that they would be uh, labeled as uh, uh, paranoids or labeled as not trusting their peers if they don't share their passwords. Or <clears throat> um, they just use non-compliant passwords. If the password uh, policy is just uh, on paper but not uh, enforced by the system, you know, you, uh, the users just continue using non-compliant passwords, even though they know that that's going to reduce their security. Or they use easy to guess passwords, uh, like their um, you know uh, relatives' names, and um, most impo importantly, they share passwords across systems because um, it. This is hard to enforce by a, by a, a company. You cannot enforce uh, the user not to use their uh, company passwords as their Yahoo password or a Hotmail password. And another interesting one is this. This is done by usually done by doctors, and they actually uh, rely on their uh, secretaries or other subordinates to remember their passwords because they think that you know uh, their job is not to remember passwords. They have more important stuff to to deal with. The reason that that all these workarounds occur is because uh, we ha we don't have a strong enough memory to comply with all these uh, policies. Um, obviously, we need a strong memory to to remember all those uh, random passwords. But it has been shown that um, you, uh, humans have a, a, a very short, uh, sh uh, very limited short-term memory. Uh, in a study uh, by Miller, uh, it has been shown that our sh short-term memory is uh, limited to uh, chunks of seven items, and also. Uh, it is. It is. It, in the same study, it has been shown that uh, it's easier for humans to remember related sequences of same length than. Uh